Turning our attention now, very rare that we find useful tight ends on the waiver wire, but especially multiple of them. Whew, let's dive into Taysom Hill, Trey McBride, and then also I'm going to jump ahead to my number two pickup of the week. I won't make you guys wait. You probably already know who it is since I'm talking about tight ends, but let's dive into these first two first who are more likely to be out there in your league. Starting with Taysom Hill, my preferred option here, but Trey McBride, very intriguing too. Taysom. The tight end six in back-to-back -back weeks, 12.1 points two in week six, and then another whopping 16.8 points this last week in week 17. He saw eight targets in week six, was actually used as a legitimate wide receiver, hauled in seven of those for 49 yards. And then last week, target share went down a little bit, five targets, but still, you know, second career high day. Eight was a career high the week before, four catches, 50 yards, but then what we know Taysom to do, 18 rush yards and a touchdown on his five attempts. 10 opportunities last week, nine opportunities the week before that. You don't get this type of volume at tight end very often, certainly not on your waiver wire. Don't forget last year, we had a 34.1 point day out of Taysomville, the tight end one. He was the tight end three in fantasy last year, despite being what? Yeah, seeing 10 targets on the season. So now that we're actually getting a receiving role mixed in with the rushing upside of Taysom Hill. When you're desperate at this position, and almost everybody is if you're not starting a top four guy at this point, why not throw at a guy that has that 25-point ceiling, but also now a more safe baked-in floor? I mean, even last year, he did have seven games with 10-plus PPR points. Nearly half the time, he was an okay guy for you, and we're starting to see him steady out here with that increased receiving usage. So I really like adding Taysom Hill at this point, I do get, you know, no Juwan Johnson these past couple of weeks. That certainly has helped him break out and get more receiving usage. That could just evaporate. It, there's a, a risk of that. That's why he's not higher on my list here, Taysom Hill. But if he just continues, he's really looked good with it. He's been great after the catch. I could see Taysom Hill maintaining that role. And then Trey McBride, the big news coming out today that Zach Ertz is on the IR, going to miss at least four weeks. And I imagine by then he'll be traded out of Arizona. But at minimum, we got the chance for Trey McBride to showcase what he can do. 89th and 85th percentile in terms of his 40 speed. And then you adjust that for his size. Boom. Monster athlete. He dominated at an insane rate. You don't ever see this for a tight end in college. 46.3% dominator rating, which accounts for yards, catches, touchdowns, total offense of the team. He had nearly 50% of the passing game there at Colorado State, 99th percentile among tight ends, 90 catches, 1,121 yards in college. So you know the kid can do it as a receiver. He can be a genuine alpha number one guy. We don't see that from tight ends very often. That's the reason he was the number one tight end in the 2022 class just a season ago. Hyper athletic and really just deadly after the catch too. Moves unfairly for a guy of his size. If anybody watched last week's game, you saw that hurdle where he leaped over a defender. Amazing stuff there. And even with Ertz on the field, we've now seen back-to-back -back weeks of McBride outperforming him. Five targets, four catches, and 62 yards, compared to just two catches and 22 yards on Ertz's five targets. And then last week, six targets, three catches, 29 yards. Not a huge day by any means, but Zach Ertz even worse. 19 yards on three catches. And the good news is, again, we don't have to even worry about Zach Ertz. Carly Murray, due back, and not next week, but probably the week after that, we already saw that Trey McBride has a huge ceiling with him. 10 targets, 7 catches, 78 yards, and a touchdown to close out last year, a 20.8 fantasy point day in your BPR leagues. So we know the ceiling's there. He's flashed it before. Now we'll have that every down roll. I love it. I absolutely love this. And, you know, John Gannon wants to use him similar to a Dallas Goddard role they talked about all preseason. Very excited to see what Trey McBride can do with the keys Finally turned over to him. Both of those tight ends. I say three to six percent, but man, if you're really needy at tight end, don't be shy. Bid, bid ten bucks. You know, bid, bid fifteen percent if you really, really desperately need a tight end. Both these guys have legitimate top ten outside, maybe even top eight. Uh, they've been again, Taysom Hill tight end six for back to back weeks, and we've seen Trey McBride be a top three tight end for glimpses. Very excited to see what these two tight ends do. But I also wanted to highlight my number two guy on the waiver wire pickup. Certainly, if he's out there, Mr. Dalton Kincaid, go after him before either of those two. As much as I like them, you got to, if he's somehow out there in your league, Dalton Kincaid, I think a 30, 35% of your fab type of bid here. Let's dive in to why. Well, a college prospect, you know, 90th percentile production profile, nearly 80th percentile uh, athleticism profile, according to Next Gen Stats, making him an elite prospect at the highest draft score, 88 
in a historically good tight end class. You're seeing what Laporta is doing. Michael Mayer having some solid games. Dalton Kincaid got graded out better than any of them by both production and athleticism. And it's easy to see why. I mean, six foot five, beastly basketball player, huge rebounding profile. And he has a 75th percentile 40 score, 74th percentile speed score. When you adjust that for the fact that he's a 260 pound, six foot five behemoth, you got to love Dalton Kincaid just in terms of his raw abilities. But now you finally see the usage come up at the NFL level. Eight catches on his eight targets. Those eight targets were second on the team behind only Stefan Diggs this last week. 75 yards led the team in catches and uh, yards this last week. So great stuff there for Dalton Kincaid production-wise. And I think this is only going to continue. The coach after the game saying, you know, uh, we need to do more of this is what the coach says after. It looked like he had more targets over the middle of the field. Defense and in. It was very excited to see. We've got to continue to do that. And don't forget that their GM, Brandon Bean, compared the, uh, Dalton Kincaid to Cole Beasley coming out. Beasley averaged 108 targets and 77 catches over his games there with the Bills. So ultimately, great stuff here for Dalton Kincaid. Huge breakup game, uh, breakout game. I mean, I love reading just what Dan Brugler had to say about the kid. With a basketball background, Kincaid has fluid movement skills, flashes the short area quickness to open stride and accelerate in and out of his breaks. Natural ball winner, shows confidence in his hands, doing most of his damage when catching the ball. A remarkable 35 to four touchdown to drop ratio in college. Above average pass catcher with burst body control and ball skills to be a weapon in the slot. And that's, again, what we're getting at when he could be that big-bodied Cole Beasley-style player in this explosive offense. Oh, I forgot to mention, Dawson Knox is now also going to be out with a wrist surgery at this point. So Dalton Kincaid, huge, huge upside here for the rest of season tight end rankings, guys. Uh, definitely check that out. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already... Share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.